If you know me, you know that I like architectural pieces. And I especially like them from the 20s. And this was probably in the 20s sometime. And it's actually a bracket. This is upside down. It probably held a porch overhang or a shelf of some sort outside more than likely. And what I really like about it is that almost all of this, these kinds of things were built on site by hand. As a matter of fact, if you look at the back of this, you can kind of see where you really don't have all the access to all the lumber you want. So there's multiple layers of different thicknesses there just to get it to the thickness they wanted. Well, I'm going to replicate this. What I'm going to use it for is going to be for a bracket support system for a fireplace mantle. Here's one that I built out of 150 year old heart pine. I'm not going to use heart pine. I'm going to use what I call southern yellow pine 2x8. Let's get started. Well, to make it easy on myself, and plus, I love, I love the idea that somebody probably traced this by hand in the field. So I kind of want to do it in honor of that person who ever built it. So I laid a piece of thin plywood on there and I just traced it so that I get the exact profile of the original piece. So this stock lumber is about an inch and a half thick. And in my case, I want this bracket to be about four and four and a half inches wide. So I took the template and I traced three of them out. So three of them by one and a half is about what? Four and a half inches wide. And that's what I want for this look. So now I'm gonna cut them all to length because I have to cut them each individually on the bandsaw. I'm using a bandsaw to cut these out, but you can also use a jigsaw to cut them out. But like I said, you have to do them one at a time and we'll adjust the profile on them later. Where's the switch? Okay, as you can see, I am not the most skilled bandsaw operator around. So those are the three pieces cut individually. But don't panic. I'm going to show you how to fix that because I actually am a pretty good sander. So take the two outside pieces and put glue all over them. Spread it around real good. I prefer just using my fingers. Slap them together and square up the edges. Just take three nails and randomly place on each, both sides. I like to put one near the end here to hold this tight. But the only thing you need to be concerned about is squaring off the bottom and the back edge because we're going to shape all this off anyway with saws and whatnot. Countersink your nails. We're gonna what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand some. this down. Well, this sander, this belt sander, fits perfect in there and shapes that. So check this out. That turned out pretty good. Check the profile out. So now I'm going to cut off the ends to square it up. Okay, now we're going to make this little top piece right here. And this is fun to me. And if you're a woodworker, it's probably going to be fun to you also. But check this out. I set the compound miter up at a 15 degree tilt there. So I take a piece of 4x4 four four stock. And I just kind of take a guess at about where the middle is going to be. I see the shadow there. So I just kind of take a guess about where the middle is going to be to make my first cut. Flip it over, 180 degrees, and I try to put the, once again, that shadow or where the blade comes out, right at the middle. Just kind of eyeball it. That is pretty close there. That's not bad. So I do the same thing All here to is line the shadow up with right here. If you look at this, you see how the shadow is lined up with the corners there. That should put the cut in just about the right place. Oh, yeah. That's pretty darn good right there. And that's how you do it. That's how you create your point. And then what you do is you measure how far down you want it. You square it off. And then you just cut it right off. And there's your piece. Voila. Well, there you have it. A replica of a 1920s porch bracket. Now, keep in mind, I used a bandsaw. I used a chop saw, I used a belt sander. They probably built this on site with little or no power tools. 
My hat's off to the 1920s craftsman style builders. Thanks for leaving something behind for us to replicate. Maybe someday somebody will want to replicate this one. Have a great day.